Hello, and welcome to Comprehensive Approach to Mobile Learning, a professional solution by Young Digital Planet. My name is Yolanta Galetska, and I'm an education expert in Young Digital Planet. Do you know what this is? Empty slide, right? But it is also white. And white, as it turned out in our survey done among middle and high school students, is a symbol of boredom. Asked why, the students said, because everything at school is white. Books, notebooks, copybooks, tests, homework, all white, all on paper. Boredom. The system, the education system, changes the school instructions and the teachers into detached from reality and boring streams of monologues, with no immediate feedback, no engagement, and no motivation. The class sizes and the program the teachers are required to cover, combined with standardized tests, do not help here. Students feel trapped, together with the teachers. The learners feel that they have no choice, no power over what to learn, when to do it, and where. Will the new technology tools help to change that state? During this presentation, I will try to show you the potential those tools have for our development, when properly used. And I will show you how we harness this power for educational purposes. Today, there are over 5.9 billion mobile phone subscriptions worldwide. Around 80% of teenagers have a mobile phone in the U.S. And for every one person who accesses the Internet from a computer, two do so from a mobile device. Apple, for example, sold 67 million iPads through the first quarter of 2012, which was just two years after they shipped the initial iPad. It took them 24 years to sell that many Macs, and five years for that many iPads, and over three years for that many iPhones. Can we use this pervasiveness for educational purposes? Well, Tablet ownership among college students and college-bound high school students has more than tripled in the last year, from 7% in 2011 to 25% in 2012. There are many that are taking advantage of that situation already. In September 2012, for example, the United Arab Emirates Higher Colleges of Technology announced a deal with Apple that will see that schools' campuses remove all paper and pens from the classroom and rely only on iPads for note-taking and information management. Similar programs are being rolled out at 62 other top colleges and in numerous businesses around the world. Like, for example, Regis College is among a growing number of schools that are seriously getting behind the iPad as an educational tool. They are distributing iPads to all faculty members and incoming freshmen starting this fall. The Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania is actually another example of a whole group of medical universities and medical schools. The full-color images of human anatomy on demand and real-time updates to their course curriculum and the easy communication with teachers and patients definitely helps here. I talked to some teachers all over the world, actually when participating in different educational fora. And one teacher, for example, from Oregon School District, just said that they are starting to make the move to one-to-one -to -one ratio. Another teacher at Zayed University in Abu Dhabi said that their university has completely bought into the iPad. All of their student and faculty have an iPad, and they are moving to develop their own in-house interactive e-books for use with the iPad. In Turkey, there is apparently the biggest project in the world where tablets are being used. 16 million K-12 students are supposed to receive their tablets, plus contents conforming to national curriculum. So far, only 100,000 tablets distrib were distributed, but within the three years, all 16 million will have the tablet. Why such a success? I have found some answers in the way we, humans, developed, and in the way our brain is formed. Mobility is in our nature. We have evolved on the go, always moving, changing places, adapting to new environment. We evolved in constant motion. We are not the strongest, we are not the fastest, but we are the smartest. Outwitting other species was our strength. Our survival skills are what allowed us to develop in the constantly changing conditions. Change, in fact, is the only permanent mark accompanying our development. 
but not without a price. There is another depiction of our development, and it shows how 20th century was a difficult period. We seem to have distanced ourselves from our natural predispositions, hunching over desks and forcing ourselves to immobile lifestyle. Will this latest development help us in getting closer to our nature? Recently, we seem to have created a lot of changes, and there seems to be an overload for one generation to digest. But the young people have embraced them extremely easily and quickly. My son is actually in the last grade of an elementary school, and he will be changing schools next September. Very big decision. When I asked him where he would like to go, and actually I meant the profile uh, more than anything else, he responded, I want to go to a school where you bring a tablet to. Hmm. Mobiles seem closer to our nature. And when we take into account the biology of our brains and the knowledge about how we learn, the practice of current mobile users, and the needs of the learners, then we can really harness the potential of those devices for educational purposes. So let's do it. We know for sure now that each brain is different. There are remarkable variations in the growth patterns between one person and another. Children develop at different rates, and each brain creates different memories of the seemingly identical experiences. Each brain learns differently, storing the information in different parts. Students even learn different subjects in a different way. There is the multiple intelligences theory by Howard Gardner, where he distinguishes from seven to nine categories of intelligence. Verbal linguistic, logical mathematical, spatial, musical rhythmic, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal and intrapersonal. Actually, some scientists disagree with this theory as it hasn't been really researched thoroughly enough. But many scientists at the same time believe that there are actually as many of the intelligences as there are humans on the planet. And each of those brains encodes different information and stores it in a different place. But what's important here is that the actual encoding of information rarely takes place when you are hunched over a desk at school with a pen and paper for 45 minutes in a row. Why? Because brain needs time to digest the information. It needs breaks. And actually 10 minutes seems to be the borderline here. Our brain is very social, so it needs communication with other human brains. And it needs repetition to encode the information in long-term memory. Hermann Ebbinghaus, a German psychologist who pioneered the experimental study of memory, is known for his discovery of the forgetting curve and the spacing effect. He actually ran limited incomplete study on himself, but published his hypothesis in 1885. And according to that, humans tend to halve their memory of newly learned knowledge in a matter of days or weeks, unless they consciously review the learned material. Ebbinghaus hypothesized that the speed of forgetting depends on a number of factors, such as difficulty of the learned material, how meaningful it is, its representation and psychological factors, such as stress and sleep. I'll get to stress a little bit later. It is suggested that in a typical schoolbook application, most students remember only 10% after three to six days, depending on the material. Therefore, 90% of what was learned is forgotten. This is really bad news. So the information needs to be repeated to be retained. Repetition strengthens the connections between neurons and builds neuron clusters. The repetitions shouldn't be crammed into one big lump though, but rather spaced in intervals over a certain amount of time. Neurons need to be fed with information, information impulses, to keep firing, to strengthen the synaptic consolidation. And again, Mobile devices provide a wonderful opportunity to do exactly this. But it is not enough to go over your notes and read them again and again. The best way to enhance memory is to elaborate the information, to work on it from different angles, to personalize it. The learner needs to focus on the meaning of the information, and the best way to make learning understandable is to provide real-world examples. Such examples take advantage of what the brain loves to do and does really well making patterns and matching them. Memory is enhanced by associations. If the new information can be embedded into an old one, 
or if there is a pattern in it, it all improves the retention and retrieval. Another effective method is to provide an introduction that provides the gist of the information. The more compelling the introduction, the better the retention. Why? Because it seems that the memories are stored in the same place that were recruited for learning in the first time. For the encoding to happen in the first place, attention is also crucial. Attention is tightly connected to interest. Our choice of the material, time and place also increase attention. You are watching this presentation and hopefully listening to me because you chose this. You chose this presentation, you chose this subject. You either find it attractive, interesting or important, or all of those. The research also shows that culture and the environment, past experiences, play important role in what we pay attention to. East Asians, for example, pay attention to the whole picture. Western civilizations, on the other hand, seem to focus on the central points. When you live on a desert, you pay attention to, I don't know, snakes and signs of water, I suppose? When in a jungle, you pay attention to all the even subtle changes in the environment. The brain is trained to do that well. So the question arises, what do you pay attention when you are constantly surrounded with digital technology, like so many of the digital natives are, the digital natives that we are educating right now? Our mind and culture are connected. We are building a world where the information is transferred with a speed that had not been imagined few decades ago. Every technological progress requires a brain to adapt to it, to embrace it. And such a changed brain changes the shape of the surrounding environment and has certain demands towards it. Additionally, the activity needs to be stimulating to be better remembered. Emotionally charged events stay longer in our memories and are usually recorded with higher accuracy than neutral memories. So, that was some of the theory. Now it needs to be combined with practice. And for that, we need to see what the kids do of their own volition on those mobile devices. Well, they play games. All those games share certain qualities. They give immediate feedback, they are challenging, adjusted to the level of the player, and they go from one level to another pretty fast. There is practice, elaboration, consolidation. They draw attention and stimulate interest. Does it ring a bell? Well, I hope it does, because it is consistent with what I just told you about the research in the brain functioning. Many of those games require intensive thinking, and the kids are still having fun. The kids also text a lot, stay on Facebook, send emails. They check YouTube videos, search internet for interesting stories. They want to stay connected. Again, an activity so close to our nature. They are socializing and they are inquisitive. They learn. Education should be social. It should be about connecting people and exchanging information. In the current trend, it is the peers that are more and more popular sources of knowledge for the modern learners. But there are some dangers in using mobile devices for learning. The information is usually fragmented. It doesn't always come from a reliable source and in majority, it is still mostly in the form of a text to be read. And actually, as the research shows, the text is the least efficient way to transfer knowledge to our brains. So now, all we needed, Young Digital Planet, to do was to design a curriculum-based learning fitting into an already existing model of mobile use. With 20 years of experience, we already knew what is important for the process of learning, and we saw how many of them applied to mobile learning. But we needed to research the specifics of mobile learning from the student's perspective, to see what their expectations and needs are, how does it differ from the other forms of learning, and what we needed to take into account in order to use this new form to its real potential. So we contacted some schools and ran some research, dividing the learners into smaller groups and asking them detailed questions about their learning routines, likes and dislikes, things to improve, and expectations towards the future. The first thing we found among our respondents, a younger group uh, of age 14 and 15 and an older, ages 17 and 18, was that the resources the young people use are mostly textbooks. And often, especially with the older group, they are using multiple textbooks to differentiate the sources and expand the subject, even though they really find the process very tiring and boring. 
The reason? Internet was asserted as unreliable and useful only for very specific searches and questions. It was seen as incomprehensive and always requiring verification. The students also reported that the biggest problem in the e-learning process were distractions. How to stay focused for a longer period of time. Motivation and engagement played crucial parts here. Another problem was rote learning, memorizing facts out of context. The interesting part here was that actually students reported that they preferred to learn with an iPad rather than computer because iPad was quieter and they could also focus a little bit more. Usually on the computer you tend to have several windows opened, whereas on the iPad you tend to do one activity at a time. Asked for a vision of perfect resource, they communicated the need for one device where they could keep their notes and have all the necessary information that would be reliable so they wouldn't have to double check it. So ideal solution would be a course design that would include theory pages with its implementation, with simulations, exercises and tests, together with the space for note taking. All in one, easily transportable, easily searchable, easily editable device. And so this is exactly what we did. We prepared a lot of curriculum-based materials with the mobile medium in mind, we added tons of multimedia to it and arranged in subject packages courses that we put into our other technology solution, Bookshelf. Enabling the access from any place and any time and on any device, allowing for easy delivery, management and editing. You will find a very educational and interesting presentation about Bookshelf on the resource pages for the digital books solutions. The students were also presented sample layouts and asked to choose the best and the worst one. They chose these ones and praised them for chill for graphics. Color creates an impression that there is less text and it also facilitates remembering where they are words. The divisions make the text more friendly and seemingly easier to learn from. The images are clear and they draw attention. The students actually underlined the need for colors and the dislike for empty spaces. Empty spaces and white color were found to be difficult to read. The text blended together and was really difficult to learn from. So it is much easier for them when there are photos or simulations that show you how something works, how it looks in reality. So there is no surprise that this project was by far the most favorite. The students loved the short text, the picture, the colors. Then the students were asked what kind of add-ons and features they would like to see present within the course. They were also asked to prioritize features we suggested and assess them in the category of their usability and attractiveness. And here you can see the results of all different add-ons and features. There are flashcards, highlighters, 3D animations, search links, enabling a direct transfer of the chosen phrase to search within Wikipedia or Google, bookmarks, why the hell do I need it, which is a special feature explaining the application of the described problem in the real life, a progress bar, personalization of the layout, stress reliever, a separate activity that could be played anytime, allowing the student to relax by stroking an animal or pressing bubbles in a bubble foil or damaging the screen of the mobile device, of course, you know, virtually. Then game, music synchronizing the brain hemispheres, and speech synthesizer, synchronizing the text with speech, Ivona, giving the learner a chance to listen to all the textbook text. Combining both attributes, we came up with final results for the most favorite features in demand. And so we have implemented many of the requested features, like progress bar, additionally showing all the results, the places visited by the students, and suggestions regarding future learning, enabling students to track, store, and report their progress and results. Detailed content, enabling an immediate jump to a chosen subject. Highlights that could be filtered by the color or the date, and notes that could be filtered the same way. And a choice of layout. All that makes learning personal, private, and familiar, changing comprehensive curriculum to more of a student's portfolio rather than just an interactive course. But let's look again at the results of the popularity of certain features. As you can see, the top two are flashcards and highlighter. 
What is really interesting here is that the research shows those are pretty ineffective tools for learning purposes. Why? Because they promote rote learning, not elaboration. Much more effective than repeating a highlighted phrase is to try and remember it, think about it, visualize it, or simply ask each other questions, trying to recall it. Why do students use it so often then? Well, because this is what is still the most popular technique at schools. And with printed materials, this is not a surprise, as you cannot do much more than that. Sometimes you cannot do even that when the book does not belong to you, so many students learn to use pencils. But we decided to use something much more efficient. And to make the description even more appealing, I'm going to use a recent story that happened to me a few weeks ago when I was helping my son to prepare for a test and the homework. About two weeks ago, he was doing homework in history, and he didn't know the answer to one of the questions regarding the conquest of America. I looked in the text and found the answer pretty quickly, so I pointed it out to him and asked why couldn't he find it, and he just blurted out. It wasn't bolded, Mom. Wow. As it turned out, he figured out that all the questions concerned issues that were bolded out in the text. And so he was just searching for those and copying the answers word by word from the text. With our multimodal inputs, such tricks are impossible. With comprehensive curriculum, the learner needs to think, draw conclusions, compare different informations. Like, for example, here, the learner was supposed to watch the video and then answer the questions regarding what he actually saw in the video. Such tricks are also unnecessary. As you can see, the visuals make the messages clear and understandable. Our solution contains many simulations, animations, videos, and slideshows. And these are combined with different types of tests, like filling the gaps, connecting elements, or choosing the correct answer, which requires your understanding of the process or information. Because learning is not about repetition and rewriting. We are all driven to multisensory experiences. It's natural we were given five senses, and we were given all of them at the same time. So the sensory processes are wired to work together. The brain processes incredible amounts of sensory information simultaneously. All the information is then integrated, assembling all the signals in order for us to perceive a particular situation, information or event. Our ancestors developed in a multisensory world. Our brain developed with a lot of visual stimuli important for our survival. Different sensory inputs influence each other. It is called a multimodal reinforcement. So learning can be optimized this way by employing more sensory inputs because our senses evolve to work together. Stimulating several of them at once improves learning, as research shows. Combining sight and sound increases the learning process. Adding touch to visual stimuli increases the recognition. Many people, when reading, visualize the meaning the content, the information. The brain seems to crave multisensory input. And vision seems to be the strongest sense. The more visual the input, the more likely it will be remembered. Mobile comprehensive curriculum enables visual and audio inputs. Visual inputs in slideshows. Visual and audio inputs in videos. Usually, the air temperature in February ranges from minus 12 to minus 16 degrees Celsius, and in July, between 4 and 6 degrees Celsius. So warm clothing is a must. The plant life on Spitsbergen is mostly tundra, with generally low vegetation, such as moss, lichens, herbs, and low shrubs. Because the summer is really short, all plants grow quickly and bloom in the period of warmer air. And animations? Inside our airways, there is an organ that enables us to speak. The voice box, or larynx, is constructed out of cartilage rings connected by ligaments and muscles. 
One of the cartilages, the epiglottis, seals the entrance to our voice box shut when we swallow food or liquids. The folds inside the voice box are the vocal cords. Depending on how tight the muscles are, the vocal cords expand or contract. Sound is created when the air we breathe out passes through the vocal cords in the voice box and out the throat. And touch input, ingestion navigation. Mobile Comprehensive Curriculum gives students a rich, immersive learning experience. Using their tablets and smartphones, students literally have all the materials right at their fingertips. And it is real fun to play with it. In fact, I worked on my desktop version at home and my kids were not really drawn to what I was doing. But when I brought the iPad with the installed Comprehensive Curriculum, they just grabbed it and started playing with it immediately. Mobile Comprehensive Curriculum is designed to take advantage of the three R's of mobile learning. Review, refresh, reinforce. Learning with mobile devices has been proven to be more effective if short lessons are to be practiced, which is review. If it is used to highlight important points, so refresh, and test learning recollection, to reinforce. Practical examples make the process really comprehensive. The acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, and straight angle are all salient angles. Look carefully how a protractor should be placed to measure the angle. The center of the protractor must be placed at the vertex, crossing point, of the angle, and one side must go through the beginning of the numbered scale. Let's draw a 68-degree angle. We draw a straight line or ray. Place the protractor, find 68 degrees, mark that point at the second side, and draw a ray. Mobile devices provide a consistent learning experience. A student can access the same educational resources from anywhere. The device can be used for fun as well as for learning. And this encourages feeling of ownership, which increases willingness to use the device. But mobile technology on its own does not guarantee success for learning. As you can see around, many mobile products imitate the print resources and are just mere copies of what has already been produced. Such an approach will not solve anything. Technology is just a tool and we need to remember that. And in order to bring results, its content needs to be designed carefully with the abilities of that tool in mind in order to benefit the most and put the tool to a good and efficient use. So. Our solution is curriculum-based, it is complete, and it includes everything that is necessary for revising knowledge on science and maths, and soon also on humanities, geography, and business studies. As you could see, it is adjusted to human perception and enables interactivity. It is also methodologically reliable, because it is based on one of Sonoma's leading educational publishers' materials. And we applied many of the gaming aspects as well. The units are short and engaging. The challenge is progressing with the raising mastery of the learner. Instant feedback helps students to identify the right answer to any question they failed to answer correctly and increases motivation and engagement. Because learning without feedback is like driving a car without controls. So immediate feedback was an important part of our application. Apart from sounds to correct and wrong answers, we provided immediate tests at the end of the lessons together with immediate progress reports. And the activities are interesting, which makes them easier to learn and remember. They are also intuitive and user-friendly. It is an up-to-date design, bright and inspiring colors, gesture navigation, easy-to-follow system of lesson organization and clear icons that guide you through the course, making learning easy and fun. And it is comfortable. Anytime, anywhere learning is more than just freedom of choice. It also gives a power to choose, to decide, to determine key aspects of learning. It makes learning more relevant as it can be studied when needed. Since the device is personal and handheld, or not even that, as you can see on the picture, and usually customized with apps and content, the learning feels more personal than in a book. 
As the research shows, the environment can enhance the learning process greatly. The best learning occurs when the environment is comfortable and not stressful. Mobile learning enables the choice of the learning environment, therefore provides a better chance for the enhancement to occur. And since I have showed this slide to other people, to some of my friends, and it turns out that, of course, everybody pictures the comfort zone, the peace and quiet in a different way, which is not surprising, therefore I provided more versions of the peace and quiet. So here you are. The power of choice. All the attributes provided by mobile devices. In an ideal world, the school day would reflect kids' changing needs and rhythms. There would be time for free play. And probably the school would start later, because as the research shows, teenagers actually sleep longer. They fall asleep later by two hours, as the melatonin is released later on. But then they need more rest, and schools don't really take this into account. There would be more transition time between classes, so that the kids would be allowed to walk, talk to their friends, you know, say hi, plan what they will do next. In an ideal future school, the arts would be integrated into the curriculum, not as an ancillary addition, but as primary part of learning, because they develop creativity and divergent thinking. At the moment, we have upper primary maths and science and lower secondary biology and maths. Lower secondary chemistry and physics, upper secondary biology, chemistry and maths will be ready by the end of the year. By the end of January 2013, upper primary history, art and music, lower secondary geography and history, upper secondary business studies will be available as well. The course consists of more than 3,000 interactive activities and exercises including built-in assessments, over 3,000 videos, animations, interactive simulations, more than 11,000 photos and illustrations, and well over 16,000 pages of engaging interactive activities. All that makes Mobile Comprehensive Curriculum the best revision tool for any exam and class test and keeps students interested and engaged in learning. Comprehensive Curriculum is the perfect solution for K-12 educational publishers and distributors looking to generate revenue from ready-made digital products and content. These engaging interactive lessons utilize HTML5, giving publishers the flexibility of delivering the content online to mobile devices, including the iPad and iPhone, to Android-based tablets, PCs, and smartphones. Additionally, from the Bookshelf app, Students can read textbooks whenever and wherever they want. And that's exactly what they wanted. And they can have all they need stored and easily accessed via mobile device or PC in one place. Mobile Bookshelf integrates with desktop and online version to make it easy for students to keep up with the course. Both interactive textbooks and the course are available right from the Bookshelf app. Students simply tap them to start reading or revising material. Since the product is so complex and rich in multimedia, we thought of providing Assets Management System, AMS, which is a tool that allows full management of the mobile comprehensive curriculum multimedia files. The software enables an advanced and effective search and browse of various multimedia file formats together with all appropriate and necessary source files. All files are described with detailed metadata allowing a more effective search and communication between different multimedia resources. The inbuilt tasking system takes full control when files are edited, ensuring that any work carried out by a team of specialists is organized and cooperative. Apart from delegating and managing tasks for each member of the team, AMS creates versions of the files in order to better track the changes and save all the results of the work. Then we have also embedded Interactive Content Editor, which is a sophisticated tool designed for editing premium quality content written in HTML5 scripting language. It can be used for localizing and adapting mobile comprehensive curriculum content and enriching it with supplementary content, as well as for customizing it to address the individual needs of each educational project. Content and graphic design of the interactive materials built using Interactive Content Editor are separated so one can easily change graphic styles. It is possible to choose a utopia from predefined schemes of mobile comprehensive curriculum, 
import one from another project, or to adapt the existing ones. One can also edit properties of each graphic style. In a similar way, it is possible to change audio and video files. Translation of instructions is also very simple, as it can be done without affecting the scaffolding of interactive content editor scripts. You can also use Interactive Content Editor to create a completely new product. If you are interested in these options, please contact your CRM. If you have any questions, please contact me, and I will be more than happy to provide you with more detailed information. Thank you very much for your attention.